Hello and welcome to another video. Today I gotta to do the unthinkable. The school holidays have started and I have to spend some time with my children. So I thought, let's try to bring one of your toys into the computer and we'll use it as a character inside Unreal Engine and build a game. So in this video I'm going to show you how to scan, texture, retopologize, auto-rig, import into Unreal, target and use as a third person character. Now this one is going to be a slightly more complicated workflow. It's going to be using ZBrush over Blender because ZBrush has more powerful sculpting tools in my opinion and also for the use of this fantastic plugin called Wrap. This does have a standalone version as well but I'm going to show you the ZBrush plugin and you can get a 14 day free trial of this and you can get a free trial of ZBrush as well. ZBrush has got a steeper learning curve and in fact you could do most of what I'm doing in Blender here and just use a standalone version of ZWrap. Let's get started. The first challenge is posing this in a T or A pose which is ideal for both rigging and the retopology process that I'm going to show you. Now Scar wasn't very flexible with the neck, in fact didn't have a neck and the head couldn't be moved and I tried my best to put it in what I thought was an A pose. Most CG characters are symmetrical, at least in the skeleton, and usually texture variation or subtle sculpting is used to create some difference between the sides. Scanning this was already going to be a challenge because it's not symmetrical. The next thing was that Scar is glossy, so I matted it with the worst brown shampoo I could find, dry hair shampoo, when I should have probably used matting spray. 45 images were taken of Scar, possibly 43, because a couple of times my flash didn't trigger, and I used a flash and a cross polarizing setup, although the cross polarizing is not essential and did cause some problems that I'll show you later on. Now I do my photogrammetry processing for this in Reality Capture. If you haven't used Reality Capture before, do check out some of my other videos and I'm not gonna go over the process too much here because it's covered in detail. The first step is to align these images and the next step is once the images are aligned, I can show you some of the problems that do arise specifically with scanning characters that have little textural variation on them. For example, Scar's largely red and largely white areas didn't have enough tie points. By putting reality capture into 2D mode and pressing Ctrl and 6, you can see how many tie points aligned in the image alignment. The areas that have less tie points are likely to give you a noisier and less complete mesh. This can largely be overcome by using proper matting spray or in some cases using dots or spraying some paint or something on there to create some textural alignment. I didn't want to deviate too much from the original texture. The reconstruction on my graphics card is pretty prompt and within three minutes I had a mesh ready to go. As we zoom in here we can see that it's not the most ideal scan. There is areas of noise on this and also it's brought, been brought to my attention, should have been brought to my attention earlier, that Scar has fists and also pretty strange feet that may be harder to retopologize and also to rig later on. I'll show you a way of getting around this. The next step is to filter out any unwanted geometry. And I usually do this in Blender for tighter control, but Reality Capture has some useful tools too. Again, check my other videos for detailed information on how to do this. Once the simplification process is complete, we can see the texturing process. And this is the reason why I chose photogrammetry. I can have up to 16K texture maps on this and AI a character generation doesn't even come remotely close to providing as detailed texture maps as what I can get here. Finally, I'll simplify, which reduces triangles to, in my case, 150,000 and makes everything easier to work with in Blender and ZBrush once exported. Once I've simplified and textured my mesh, I can import it into Blender. And if you watch my previous videos that I keep mentioning, I'll go over this process in detail there. Essentially, you need to turn into X-ray mode and trim off the excess verts that you don't need. The key here is not to rotate, scale, or move the object from its original origin point, or if you are going to, return it back to that, because we're going to re-import this back to Reality Capture at some point. Now what I would always suggest is once it's in Blender to trim out any geometry under the armpits and sadly the crotch. So if you do like getting close to crotches, this is the job for you. Get in there and trim out any mesh which is not part of the main geometry. This will make rigging and retopology much easier later on. And here's more of that process in ZBrush. With ZBrush I can use the push brush or the move brush rather and smoothing to further accentuate those gaps under the arms. Luckily for me, SCAR is gender neutral, 
so this was done rather quickly without having to explain the principles of castration to my children at this age. Okay, now it's time for an optional step and it's time for a little bit of surgery on poor Scar. Now, the plugin that I'm going to use, Z-Wrap, comes with its own base mesh, which it uses for essentially retopologizing. And I'll explain this in a bit of detail in a moment. Basically, what I did was import this and take the hands and feet off of this and cut them and then basically cut off Scar's hands and feet and glued these back on. Now you could do this in Blender if it's easier for you. I did make a bit of a, a mess of this and I could have done it a lot better. And symmetry definitely helps with this. I didn't have symmetry. I didn't even rotate them at the right angle, but I'm doing this pretty pronto. If you take a bit of time over this and you're better than me at sculpting or modeling, you can even model your own hands or your own feet or even just create a gap between Scar's toes and fingers and make it so that they look more similar to human hands and fingers. What I did was just cut these ones straight off, glue them, and then use the DynaMesh to kind of glue everything back together again. And here is the same process by copying the feet from the target mesh and removing Scar's feet and positioning them, and then again DynaMeshing and smoothing out the joins to make it a little bit more natural. I will probably do a full tutorial on this if there is enough interest, because I understand time-lapsing this doesn't show all the nuances of using ZBrush, and it can be quite tricky to navigate and position things in ZBrush if you've not used it before. With this step complete, it's time to run the wrap plugin. Now what Wrap is going to do is to take the epoxy geometry or the DynaMesh geometry that comes with SCAR, or in your case if it's come from a 3D scan, the horrible triangulated meshes that you get out of this, and effectively transform it into a nicely retopologized and UV'd character mesh and map it everything correctly to that. You can also do a texture transfer and it's been around for a couple of years and I remember using it when it first came out and it really is magic. There's nothing else like this in the market. So essentially what you need to do here is pick a bunch of points to guide it on its way. The more points you can put here, the better. I do all the key areas, going for the crotch first, obviously, um, and working my way around and just putting ones on the fingers and the toes and zooming in, setting those points. And when I'm done, I go for the cartoon wrap and watch the magic happen. There is my retopologized scar, albeit with human hands and feet, and not looking exactly like this, this, this scan, but not far off, I'm happy with that. Now there are a few extra stages you can do here. You can use the move topology brush, or you could just leave it as it is. It's entirely up to you how good you want it to look in the rigging process. So what I do from here then is I'm going to re-import this back into Reality Capture to project the texture from those images and map those back onto this new UV'd and new topologized mesh. Now once the texturing process is complete, we can have a quick look at our model and see that there is errors where there isn't texture there. Clearly the hands and feet weren't there on the original model, so there I'll have to do some further correction of the texture data. Also, as I only did a single pass, there's areas perhaps underneath the armpits and the top of the head that would also need some texture correction. Fortunately, because I have a nice UV map on my base mesh that I projected to, this could be very easy to do even in 2D mode. Instead, I'm going to import the final mesh into Blender. The first thing I'm going to do here is to set the size and the scale of my geometry. Because I'm retargeting to a third person character that is 1.8 meters high, I'll ensure that this is set and put my geometry also at 0, 0, 0 on the axes. It's important to press Control A to scale everything up correctly. And after this, I can go into the texture painting mode and fix some of those textures. I can use the clone tool and I can clone out parts of the texture from the good areas into the bad areas. You could use substance or you could take more time over this to be build more detailed textures off of still images or anything else you wanted to. And ZBrush also has a projection mode that could assist with this. At a core level, you could also retouch the textures in 2D. Once we're finished, we can export the mesh as an FBX or an OBJ for rigging. And what we can also do here is to ensure that we save our corrected textures out for use in import into Unreal. And now on to the rigging. Now there's several solutions for this. I'm gonna show Mixamo first, where you simply upload the model and you start putting things like the chin, wrists, and other 
key areas onto the model. This is a relatively simple process. The main issue we have here is that our model is not symmetrical, so I had to uncheck the symmetry box. Again, as I said at the beginning of the video, symmetry will help massively. Once everything is in place, you can press next to upload your model and return with a fully rigged version. Now this, I had some problems with this around the shoulders and the neck, and I'm gonna show you some ways that you might be able to fix this or look at some other alternatives that you could use. So one method would be to bring in the rigged character into Blender and go to the weight painting. And by selecting each of these individual bones, you could go here and adjust the, the weight painting. In Scar's case, issues would be with the these elongated traps and the lack of neck here, and also the position of the shoulders. So for example, if we go neck here, we see that there, it's pointing to the back and you could go in here and paint on a different area and correct what you need to correct here, taking some time, possibly fix issues like that. The clavicles here could also be a problem. So you could go in and erase this way painting or repair it and see how to correct. The next method would be to use this uh, fantastic plugin, which is free, that allows you to rig directly the MetaHuman skeleton in Blender. And here's the author's video on YouTube showing you how to get set up. Now, one of the biggest limitations of this plugin or any rigging process, again, is the lack of symmetry in my character here. And what I can see from my character here is that the hand positions just don't line up in symmetry. So you can see things like my feet not being symmetrical here could pose a problem. You could actually fix this in sculpt in some cases if you wanted to with things like the deform brush or grab brush. And so with a combination of those techniques, we should have something that's automatically riggable and ready to import into Unreal Engine. Now for the next step, I've already done a video pretty much outlining this with my Rodin AI video, but I'm gonna go through this again. And for this, you're gonna need Unreal 5.4.3. And we'll launch that and choose the third person template. Now, once this is up and running, I'm gonna press Control Space to get my content browser up. And I'm gonna right click and import what I've downloaded from Mixamo. It's important not to have a skeleton in this box and we'll go ahead and press import. If imported correctly, you should automatically have a skeleton, a physics asset, and a skeletal mesh. You may also have a correct material here, but if you don't, it's easy enough to import the texture and assign your own material. Once this is done, we can just plug in our texture map to the base color, and if we've baked a normal map in Reality Capture, we can also add a texture for this. We can combine this with the material function normal strength, plug this into normal, and then by pressing the one key, add a parameter here for the strength of the normal. We could also add some specular here and then some imperfection textures in the roughness channel to give this a more a toy-like effect. Now I'm going to save this material and I'm going to show you how to retarget, which is really quite easy in Unreal 5.4.3. What I'm gonna do is go into my content folder and search for our animation blueprint. And what I can do here is I can just right click and literally retarget all of the blueprints by doing this. And just click retarget animations. Sure, you've chosen ABP Manny. And for your new skeleton, choose the skeleton that you've imported with your mesh. Click Export Animations. Add a prefix and click Export. What this will now do is give you a bunch of animations which match your third party characters. So you should be ready to literally replace Kong as your character. What you want to do here is to go into your third person character blueprint Ensure that your retargeted animation blueprint is in here and change the mesh here to your mesh that you've imported. Once we compile and save, 
There is a few things we might need to fix here in our animation blueprint. So go to that new retargeted animation blueprint you've created. And on their land here, you can remove this additive by holding the control key and connecting this directly into here. Compile. And now we're just going to press play to see how that looks. We can actually connect our character to the animation sample template from a tutorial I found earlier, and I'll link that in the comments if you wish to do so. And of course, we can go in and correct our rig further or create a rig from scratch to get a far better experience for this. I hope you enjoyed the video and I know there's a lot there and if you've got any questions please ask me because I kind of discovered a lot of this stuff by experimentation and I'm prone to error as well so if you see anything wrong just hit me up in the comments subscribe and I look forward to seeing you for more tutorials thanks for watching